Eternal Most High God, Creator of heaven and earth. When you turn around, you don't throw a shadow because you are light. Amen. You live in light eternal. And we pray, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus the Christ, that you will bring truth into such reality this afternoon. Vel Revinea, Suzi Vravaketes, Maliga Nange. Organis blanga deis clus kermala e grus kunungligai, whose glambre his clinicus kabunda dei. O rene, simre, sin renena, zundre nilivre emblinga das glidru dus plaviesta dei, silivre visis levlacus tu bruga bare te. Mm. 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 It's like God is saying, I have touched your heart. I've even touched your beings. I've even moved upon your soul. But I'm ready to touch your mouth, my child. I'm ready to touch that organ called the tongue. So that when you speak, it will be thus, say the Lord. So that your words will not be mere empty speaking and babblings and vain babblings of human understanding but truly it shall be and will be my words that I have put in your mouth like I spoke to my prophets of old and said my words that I have laid in your mouth you shall speak and when the words are uttered I will follow those words with my works and you will be able to do the greater works so be ready get ready Listen and understand that I'm about to touch the tongues and the mouths of hungry vessels. Ves vres meneida sus brabaste sis prededo sus cravinga de glingo sunglestke las knesto mm rebla istititi bobraba He will speak and people will say, can this be a human being? Can this be a man? Is this the one that we knew until now? No, you'll be a stranger to your own people. But they will realize a transformation has taken place because from the inside of you, my wisdom will flow. My child, we thank you, God, that's opening opening of your word giveth light and that there will be an opening of your word this day God just in some way help us not to be tired I know we're still living in these bodies but your word says the spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken these mortal bodies Amen. and we pray for quickening yes. Holy Spirit quicken our mortal bodies that we will hear yes. perceive understand and go out and be able to do. I'm going to take that word in the message that says, if we love me, you will do these works. And we want to do it. So, uh, let's open our Bibles and the book. Take a, take a look inside the book. Can you just pray in the spirit for a minute or two? Just will you sit? Just pray in the spirit. Oh, bless you, Lord. Put your hand on your Bibles and pray in the spirit. Open it the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Put your hand on there, one hand on the Bible, one hand on your heart, and start praying. 
Oh, si Rene Dugu, Melangkring, Gidis, Klaes. Bless you, Jesus, while we worship you. Right, in many separate revelations, I'm reading Amplified. In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth. Now remember, yesterday when we said, talked about the parts and the portions, but the time will come when the fullness, the perfect, the maturity will break through. Now, in the past, God spoke in portions through the prophets. In many separate revelations, each of us set forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways, God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. Again, every word just follows the other word. Yesterday we spoke about 1 Peter 1 verse 19, 11 and 12 where the prophets of old spoke. We spoke about Acts 3, 19 that the, the restoration must come of all the things that all the prophets spoke about. But says verse 2, in these, in the last of these days he has spoken to us in the person of a son whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things also by and through whom he created the worlds and the riches of space and the ages of time he made, produced, built, operated and arranged them in order now, if you can remember yesterday when we touched on Psalm 8, if we behold the handiwork of God, then we ask ourselves, what is man that thou thinkest of him? And we heard how the stuff were created by the word that was in the beginning with God. God spoke things into being. Now, listen. Listen. Jesus is now the one. God spoke through him. He's the heir of all things. Verse 3. He is the sole expression of the glory of God the light being the outreign of radiance of the divine he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by the mighty word of power Put your hands up, say, here, help. This is it. God spoke in many ways. But in these last days, He has spoken by the Son. The Son is the heir of all things. And the Son upholds everything everything you see you yourself the whole universe is upheld by the word of power somebody say Ooh. okay now I'm going to try and help you to preach with me this afternoon if you preach with you will not get too tired God has spoken to us by the Son whom He has made heir of all things and this Son upholds all things by the word of power. I tell you, what power must be in that word? Just imagine, just let your imagination go for a minute. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and without form. And the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters, moved, says the King James, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be what power in that word. It's general knowledge, but do we really realize what God is saying if we want to study something about the word of power? He upholds all things by the word of power. What power in that word? In the beginning was that word. That word was with God. That word is God. All things are made and were made by Him. And everything exists in Him. In what? In the word. What power in that word? So for this afternoon's study, some of you have heard some of the stuff that I'm going to say this afternoon. 
in Genesis 1 and after yesterday's three studies on the Christ life which only came to being after the Holy Spirit came upon him it's the Holy Spirit that was moving on the waters that made God to speak so it's the Holy Spirit that orchestrates the word of power Jesus was born of God the Holy Spirit came upon Mary so the seed implanted in her was of God so here comes Jesus, he's not born out of a human lineage. He hasn't got human blood in him. He's got divine blood in him. But still, still, we don't read of the power, the glory, the signs, the wonders and the miracles. But then the Holy Spirit came upon him. So when did the word became filled with power? When the Holy Spirit came. When did the word, when was there power in the universe? When the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the water. So the prophets of old, I mean, think of all the prophets. The first two verses of Hebrews 1. The Bible says, The Holy Spirit, says Micah, in me causes me to speak. My Spirit that is upon you will cause you to speak. Amen. Now after this prophetic word, this is just what I feel I should preach on. Go look at Jeremiah. Go look at Isaiah. Go look at Micah. I mean, look at Ezekiel. I mean, Ezekiel is filled. I mean, I think that's a book that's filled with most of it. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and lifted me on my feet and said, Son of man, speak. And then I spoke as I was commanded. I just think of all, oh, just think of, just think of the dry bones. And the Spirit lifted me up. And the Spirit carried me away. And the Spirit put me in a valley. And, and he said, prophesy. And I prophesied was commanded. Hey, and there was a stirring and a shaking and a quaking. So it's when the Holy Spirit gets involved with your speaking that your words become filled with power. It's when the Holy Spirit came upon the face of the water, when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. It's by the Holy Spirit that the Bible says God has now spoken to us by the Son because He only became the Son after He became the Christ. And now He speaks and He upholds everything by the word of His power. God gave me a dream here in 1982-83 82, where Jesus took James and John and Peter to go up on a high mountain and he started shining with a glory and all of a sudden here comes Elijah and Moses and they appeared on the mountain and all the time Jesus was challenged was on the law and the prophets say the law and the prophets say so here's the law Moses here's the prophets Elijah the other group wants to hang on now abide the faith hope and love and I hope you understand it better yesterday it's not a cliche now abide the faith hope and love God is trying to tell us something now by the faith, James, what does it help? I say, I've got faith and I can't prove it. Hope, Peter, the hope that is set before us. Love, John, let us love one another. So yes, faith, hope and love. New Testament. Here's the law and the prophets, the old covenant. Here stands Jesus, a voice come from heaven. Peter says, let's get the law and the prophets back. Let's build some huts. The voice says, This is my son. Yeah, he, he, him. God did speak at old times and diverse manners by the prophets and he gave us portions of his revelations. But now we can get the revelation if we listen to what the Son has to say because of the Holy Spirit and now the Son carries everything by the word of his power. If somebody can understand and just shout and say something good and glory, 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 glory. Let's go to Luke chapter 3. So in the creation it was the Holy Spirit. In the prophets it was the Holy Spirit. Right through the Bible, when the speaking 
became filled with power we read the Holy Spirit was there is that all right Hallelujah. Luke chapter 3 yeah it's all right man. Verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, now we're going to start seeing how we're going to listen to the Son and what does it mean to us today. Now when all the people were baptized, and when, when Jesus also had been baptized, and while he was still praying, the visible heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit, it. everybody say Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and a voice I want you to look at what we're going to touch on today when the Holy Spirit comes all of a sudden there's a voice Holy Spirit voice Holy Spirit voice a voice came from heaven saying you are my son my beloved in you I'm well pleased and I find it like, for those that are students and love to look at things like that, David was anointed three times as king. And three times God said to Jesus, you are my son. And every time a different truth has been unfolded according to the different anointings we have to carry. And that's for you to go study at your house. Chapter 4. Then Jesus, now the voice said, Now Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led in and by the Holy Spirit. Who led him into the desert? The Holy Spirit. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended every, the complete cycle of temptation, the te he temporarily left him, that is, he stood off from him, until another more opportune and more favorable time. I spoke on that yesterday. Then Jesus went back full of and under the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee and the fame of him spread through the whole region round and about. Now look at this. Now we touched on it yesterday how his fame spread abroad. Now, do you want your fame to spread abroad? Of course, don't look too holy now. Man. You want people to know about your church. You want people to know that there's another church in the city. If you don't want it, why don't you join one of the others that you came out of? So you want people to recognize you. Of course, I want it to holy. Look up, but this is no new holiness and there's no skinheilige. If you don't want what I just said, you wouldn't have left where you were. So, in no, we are kingdom people. We are too. We want everybody blessed. We want too. I want people to come to this place. Yes. And you want people to come to your place. Yes. Why don't you resign and give all your people to the other prosperous? let's walk in truth are you really blessed when you hear everybody's running over the street no it is I could lose them no you want them where you are why because you think God has anointed you and he has so I want the fame to spread abroad and you want your fame to spread abroad I proud any fun I act me at proud fun you want God to do something that the world can know God is doing something and in the end of that we would love to see all the churches be blessed but I want this church to be blessed I want people to know God oh you would love God to go you would love oh I want that so do you so his fame spread abroad. What made his fame to spread abroad? He hasn't done anything yet. He hasn't even been to the synagogue to tell them the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. 
So when he came into the synagogue, the crowds were there waiting for him because his fame spread abroad. So what happened to make his fame spread abroad that when he made the proclamation that he is now anointed, the whole city was there to hear the proclamation. No, it was there was no sign yet. They're only going to happen now. He walked into the desert by the Holy Spirit, anointed of God. A voice said, you are now my son. He walked into the desert, tempted by Satan, if you are the son of God, and Jesus Come on, somebody shout it. Now we lay emphasis on that's where we put the emphasis. Can I change the emphasis for study reasons today and say Jesus said and leave that alone for one minute? That's I'm going to preach in any case. <laughs> Jesus said, It is written, Thou shalt not tend the Lord. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only. So I want to put emphasis on this, not on that, because that Satan knew. Anyway, because he used that to tempt him. He used the written word to tempt Jesus. Jesus used the written word to tell him, I also know that. You don't have to agree, but as I go on, you will agree. There must have been something in the way and how Jesus said his words not with my mouth let's go let's try and see if I everybody say his words are filled with power the revelation that I spoke about yesterday that God just gave us in a split second okay verse 18 then Jesus went into the synagogue verse 18 and he found the scroll and read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to speak. Okay, I will not hear the pastor, I will not hear the Your Bible may say preach, your Bible may say speak, your Bible may say, but the root word is to speak. He has anointed me to speak about the good news. Amen. He has sent me to announce the release to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down in calamity. He has sent me to speak the word. Uncle Selvin. He said, 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 and the devil flees. Then he opened the scroll, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me to speak. Now listen. And when I speak, people will hear the gospel. When I speak, deaf ears will be opened. When I speak, blind eyes will be opened. When I speak, cripples will walk. When I speak, Demons will flee. I want some louder shouts here. So I'm anointed to speak, and when I speak, there will be gospel preached. When I speak, deaf ears will be over. When I speak, the blind eyes will be over. When I speak, they will walk. When I speak, the demons will flee. So I want you to know, I'm anointed to speak. Verse 31. And then he came down to Capernaum a city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath days and they were astonished at his doctrine how I really want you to shout for his word was with power why were the people astonished because his words okay, 
Okay, I'm going to read it, then I'm going to ask it, you're going to shout it. They were astonished because his word was with power. Why were they astonished? Because his word was power. So that's what made the fame to spread abroad. And in the synagogue there was a man, I'm reading King James now, which had a spirit of an unclean devil. I don't know if you can find a clean devil, but... <laughs> and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying... Okay, if you get something where it says say or word, well, you just help me read. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed. Everybody said they were amazed. And they spake among themselves, saying, What a... Come help me, even if it's just ten. In the King James... Luke chapter 4, verse 36. Are you there now? And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him <laughs> went out into every place of the country round and about. Somebody shout, my goodness, there must be something in here. Did you see that? So Luke chapter 3 says, his fame went abroad. So I said, how could his fame went abroad? Because he didn't do anything yet. So I say, let's change the emphasis from written to said. Now in the very few verses I proved to you that his fame went abroad because they said his word is with power. His word is with power. What type of word is this? That with authority he speaks and demons listen. With authority he speaks. Everybody say his word was with power. My goodness, my goodness. Come on, just do something. Clap your hands or say something. Say, Lord, I got to hear this. I got to hear this. I got to get it. Go to 1 Corinthians in chapter 4. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Paul says, So I urge you, I implore you, be imitators of me. Followers, King James, imitators. For this very cause I sent to you Timothy, who is my beloved and trustworthy child in the Lord, who will recall to your minds, listen to this, who is here to help me? And help on. I want to recall to your minds my methods of proceeding and course of conduct, conduct and way of life in Christ, such as I speak everywhere teach everywhere in each of the churches are, are you ready for a revelation Paul says I want you to start being imitators of me and I want you to take notice the method of which I come to churches the way I speak because there's something in the speaking of a Holy Ghost man that makes the difference between the speaking of an unanointed man Kom broer Reinhard Bonke kan praat oor die nieuwe tannapaste en hy uitnodig en gee, dan kom miljoen mens hy. Is it true? TV Joshua can drink coke and tell you about the latest knickknacks on the market and hold his hand out there and the demons come out and he drinks coke and talk to you about last night. And okay. Some of you have become conceited and arrogant and pretentious, counting on my not coming to you. But I will come to you, and it will be very shortly, if the Lord is willing. Then I will perceive and understand, not 
what the talk of these puffed up and arrogant spirits amount to the King James says the speech of them that are puffed up but I want to know your force your moral power your excellence of soul that they really possess for the kingdom of God consists of and is based on not talk but power now let's see if we can just get an exegesis on this scripture okay. Dit is die twee Grieke wat jare vriende is met die paal self wakker word en die een ou verhuis oor see en intussen die ander buddy van hom wat my groot geword het is toe weer geboor en intussen en hy word die prediker en die ander ou kom terug van Amerika af en hy het nog nie by Jesus uitgekom nie en hy kry mekaar op die lichthalwe en die een vraag what are you doing now? he says now I'm now preaching he says what's that? He says, now I'm working now for Jesus. So he said, oh my goodness, I've just come back in the country, so we're working for the same company. He says, I work for Dairy Bell, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> well, I said, exit Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay, listen, 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 listen. Let's try and just grieve the layout of what Paul is saying. He's saying when I come to you, I do not want to know your puffed up. Is that the words? Puffed up, arrogant, pretentious. We deal with this guy. And if it's all spelled, I can forget. Speech. So by TV, dan sê hulle die ouwe verkeerd te spel, en skryf hulle vir my een brief. Dan sê hulle, Did you know that you put an A where there was supposed to be an E? I said, did you hear the message? <laughs> You'll be amazed. People watch your TV program, they phone me about the spelling a C that I left out. I said, lady, did you get the message? She says, yes, but your spelling was wrong. I said, I go so fast, I don't always look at it, but on the overall, I think I do good. <laughs> so, that's the story. Okay. I don't want to know your puffed up, arrogant speech. <laughs> but I want to know your power. For the kingdom of God is not in talking. Now if we take that scripture out of context and we just go say, Oh, you want to pray, 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 the king of God is not praat nie, brother, it's krach. But the old one says, in any case, it's krach, so we don't know what we're praying. Isn't it funny that the people that challenge you on things are normally the people that hasn't got the things that they challenge you on? Like yesterday when I spoke on the, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they said, how oh, no, the gifts shall cease. But they don't come with the perfect. The gifts only cease when the perfect is there. So the talking, yeah, you know, that's your pet, 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 three years. How can you preach three hours? People can only listen for 20 minutes. Says who? You go to the Bible school, six hours. You come out, you know all the details. You know where the bird has fallen. You know where the boom has fallen. You know on the river. You tell the whole three-hour video, six-hour TV program. You tell it in detail, but you can't listen to any minutes. That's for your relief. I preach two hours every service. Two solid hours I preach, and people sit here. They don't move. Not because I'm something, but. We've taught them, there's no limits on your mind, man. And in any case, you're supposed to have the mind of Christ. (laughs) 
So if we take it out of context and say, the, the, the kingdom of God is not speaking. Kingdom of God's not talking. Kingdom of God's power. No, it's not what it says. Read the two sentences together. It says, the kingdom of God is not in puffed up speaking. It's not in arrogant speech. But it is in power. So if we read the context, the Greek scholars that want to check up all those words, it means, I want to know when you speak, is there power? Clap your hands, somebody. I want to help you. When you speak, is there power? Now, preachers don't always share how they get sermons. But I shared to you yesterday how I got this one. If you remember, so I'm not going to touch on that. But I'll share, to you, share with you what God spoke to me when I looked at the scripture. God said, did you know that many of the revelations Paul wrote down, he got by reading the Old Testament? And then I checked it out and said, but so many things Paul refers to the word, but he doesn't say it's written. He doesn't say Psalm says, he doesn't say Job says, but if you read through Paul's epistles, you must see how many of the things that Paul wrote down is mentioned in the Old Testament. And God said, did you know that Paul was busy with a study of the book of Zechariah when he wrote this? Oh, you don't have to believe it, I'm just saying what God spoke to me in my prayer time, in my reading time, which is very inconsistent and inconsistent. Didn't get that one, but don't worry. I stand here up and bid as I can. I bid when I take it, and I bless when I take it. Now I'm three days old, but I'm not going to bid. Yeah. So then I'm going to wait until I get back. I'm not going to bid when my hand goes here. But I'm going to die on what I said. Hey, I have nothing for you and Annie. I'm going to take my tuna. I'm going to bid. I said, yeah, you had a mooi opgemaakt, watch now, okay? <laughs> don't be, you can get legalistic on anything. But don't get legalistic on spiritual things. Oh, you weet, Wigglesworth, het was nooit a half uur sonder om die Bible te lees nie. En het nooit a half uur met mense gepraat en dan bid hy a half uur. Het was Wigglesworth. Als God so met Wigglesworth gewerk het, dan is het so, as Wigglesworth nie half uur gebid het nie, was hy onder condemnation. Ek is nie. Ek kan twee dagen nie bid nie, as ek nog nie onder condemnation. Maar ek loop jou dag aan bid. Maar as ek tyd het om te bid, daal is my vrou en my sien sies op. Brother, I get up in the morning and say, wat die jylle jylle my vers kon ek een bykie bid vandag. But I come here, I lock this place and I pray all day long. But if I don't pray tomorrow, I don't feel guilty. There are times when I read two, three nights that I don't sleep, that I read, 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 read. Then it comes three days that I don't read. Oh no, bro, have you read this book? You don't get up every morning, pray one hour. God will depart from you. No, he won't. He won't. He won't. He's living right inside of me. And he said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, no one will pluck you out of my hand. So you can get legalistic on anything. But I'm legalistic on nothing. As your heart will grow, draw up your staff. You will be able to slap the ground. Mark what you will. Just serve God, man. God spoke to me and said, Paul was busy with a study on the book of Zechariah when he wrote, I want to know not your arrogant speaking, but I want to know your power speaking. When you speak, is there power involved? And then he took me to the book of Zechariah. So let's see if it was the spirit that spoke to me. Zechariah chapter 4, we all know it. It's not by mind. It's not by power. But I must be with you. Not by mind. Not by power. You'll be amazed how many scriptures have lost their value because we sing them. 
But you'll be amazed how many scriptures get power because we sing them. So when you sing them, go make sure what the Bible says about it. Did you know that the false doctrine on the taking away of the church and that came because of singing? Did you know the slavery of the Negro people in America? The Negroes was of old a very religious nation. Did you know that? They were very religious. And they were taken away slaves to these concentration camps. And they were singing songs about their loved ones that were sitting in the concentration camps. Mel Bailey wrote the book, The Kingdom, The Power and The Glory. Said the Negroes were singing longing for their loved ones in the concentration camps. Then the 1906 revival came. But 40 years before that, a Roman Catholic priest with another two men started writing doctrines about dreams they had. There was no scriptures involved, it was just dreams. And then the 1906 revival broke out mainly amongst the Negro people. The man that was heading the revival was a black man, William Seymour. And the Negro people just sang their songs about their loved ones in church because it was so mingled with Christianity but it was fleshly songs about their loved ones and because of the revival they thought these songs were scriptural and some of the churches still sing it today they long to go to a place they desire to go to that place they want to be in that place they want their loved ones to come home they want to go to their loved ones it was slavery songs not Christian songs so when we sing not by my not by power what did we really sing okay Zechariah 4 I don't know why I throw this stuff in between <laughs> verse 6 Lord help us he says then he said to me now remember that was the vision of the golden candlesticks and the lamps and you, re you remember that amen we remember that so here he speaks let's take, pick it up at verse 5 then the angel who talked with me answered me do you know what these are and I said no my lord then he said to me this addition of the bowl to the candlestick causing it to heal a ceaseless supply of oil from the olive trees is the word of the Lord. Just stop there for the sake of explaining. The ceaseless, ceaseless supply. Holy Spirit help us. The ceaseless supply of oil flowing from the candlesticks is the word try it again what are these candlesticks that cry? I don't know I'm going to tell you what it is the ceaseless in other words the constant the unhold and the flui von uli what blay look the constant ceaseless on hold and the supply of oil that is the word yeah. which word to Sarah Bible <laughs> saying <laughs> it's the ceaseless supply of oil which is the word that will come to Sarah Bible that will say not by might nor by power but by my spirit of whom the oil is a symbol says the Lord of hosts donkey Elvin come on we preachers man let's shout the ceaseless supply of oil is the word of the Lord to Sarah Bible this word is saying not by might nor by power but by my 
spirit, but by my spirit of which the oil is the symbol. Okay, Predicus can now clear us the blue. Paul says, I don't want to know your arrogant speech, I want to know your power. So Zechariah says, the ceaseless supply of oil is the word. Does Tony in your amplifier? The ceaseless supply of oil is the word. That word is saying, it's not by human might, not by human spirit, but by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts, of which this oil is the symbol. So, if you speak, it must be anointed of the Holy Spirit. Do you get it? Shall I show? Yeah, I can just put it. What does your next verse say? Not by might, not by power, my spirit says, Lord. What does the next word say? Verse 7. Read it out loud. Everybody together. Okay, what does verse 7 says? Verse 7 says, Mountains be removed. What does Mark 11, 22 and 23 says? Oh, come on, man, you've got to be near a bocker now, is it? What does Mark say? If you believe, you shall speak to the mountain. The context of Zech Zechariah 4 is, it's not by might or by power, but you've got to hear first that there's a ceaseless supply of oil. This oil will bring about the real word. That will come to Sarah Bible. What will say Sarah Bible? There's a mountain before you. You're not going to get it down with your might. You're not going to get it down with your power. You're not going to get it down in your own spirit. The only way you're going to get that mountain down, sir, Bible, is get the ceaseless supply of oil and dry my spirit, by my spirit, of which that oil is the symbol. And then you will say, oh, mountain. Oh, come on, somebody shout. Rara, ek preek jou nou hard. Did you hear that? Come on the connotation people. This has got to bless you man. It's got to bless you. It's got to bless you. In Luke, in Acts chapter 13. Remember, to Osergius Paulus, for the lack of the word that is in English is. When he got Paul and Barnabas, and this is what he said, I want to hear the word of the Lord. Beyond that is true. I want to hear from you the word of the Lord. So they sent and they got Paul and Barnabas. So yes, Paul and Barnabas. Said, can you bring me the word of the Lord? I wonder if we shouldn't read it. I wonder if everybody will believe what I'm going to say now. I'll just say it. You can check it up. Acts chapter 13. I want to hear from you the word of the Lord. Okay, don't turn. Just listen. You can check it now. I want to hear from you the word of the Lord. And the minute he said it, here comes the magician, Martino. Open, say to me. The Bible says, King James and Amplified, 
And Paul turned towards this man. And he spoke and said, You child of the devil, full of iniquity, how long will you withstand the righteousness of God? You shall be blind from now on. And the Bible says, And Sergius Paul, the governor of the island, believed the word. <laughs> oh, come, come, come. Oh. He believed, he believed the doctrine. Weet nog een ander vertaling dan? He was deep in Oh, check it gegooid toe. Ik dare you, go check it out. Come on, I dare you, go check it out. Go check it out. Ja. 7 through 12. I dare you, check it out. In all the different translations you've got in front of you. Come on. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Hmm? Did you see it there? Yeah. I just read it quickly in the Amplified and the King James. He says it. I want to hear the word. So Paul says, man, man, man. I read the book of Zechariah. I wrote to the Corinthian church. I know exactly how to bring a word of power. If you want to hear the word, just bring me a sick. They say, no, we've got no sick yet. How can I just speak to something that you will understand the word? So God sends the two of an So here comes the magician with his stockies and Asa and Uda. Paul says, I've been waiting for you, man. Because this man wants to know the word, so I've got to get a word. People start with that, will be the same. This is what we touched on when was it this morning? When T. L. Osborne went to India in 1943-42. Spent four years there, couldn't get one soul saved. But he preached the word for four years, couldn't get one soul saved. When he went back to India after spending another two years in the United States, that first campaign he held God said to him, I will help you to speak the word of power. You should see the pictures. A mighty big stage. And as he was preaching, a group of Muslims jumped up. That tried to con this whole meeting. And they carried a man on the stage. A priest of the Muslim community that was blind for something like eight years. And they said, if what you say is true, we want to see it now. And he thought, well, this God said, no, 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 no. Tell them to put him on that side of the stage and just speak the word. Come on, who was here this morning, man? So here stands T.L. Osborne. Now this is going to be his challenge of a lifetime. This is what happened in Acts 13. Blind eyes, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, I adjure you, that's his words. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I adjure you, open! Ah, 70,000 people hit the deck and came to Jesus. Now you'll understand, Matthew, ate better after this morning. Get a rock of stone on. I was going to touch on signs, wonders, miracles, but when the prophetic word came out, I said, this is it. God says, I want to touch your mouth this afternoon. 
I wonder. I wonder. I just wonder. Just king. I'd like him to do it. I can hear it in the room. Hear it. But I dream about it. I dream about miracles and words. I dream about teaching and preach. Mensen wil weet hoe preek ek. Hier en die ding kom, preek ek is van, kom, hoe krijg je die goed bij elkaar? Dit is baie funny. Maar ek preek nie met die bijbel nie. I just sit and dream. I read one scripture, I just dream. And then I get a scripture. And then that one follows that one and that. Ooh. Yee. Wow. Shoo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no one is near school. So I scheme a lot. Then you're going to fall and see. So I just scheme. Why is it? Why is it that the aprons and the handkerchiefs that Paul had on? So the aprons was because he was making tents. So they had these thick aprons as he was sewing the tents and just rubbing his hands all the time. Why is it that the aprons and the handkerchiefs that he used to just wipe his sweat off while he was working? Why was there so much power in these handkerchiefs and aprons? That when they took it, Acts 19, 11 and 12, to the sick, the sick were healed and the demons just left them. So I just came in. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. So is tongues of the Holy Spirit then there's power in tongues. So Paul is working. Uriba Sandeira, Sukutama, Husama Hokate, Ringam Bling Inglangu. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, the tent. Yeah, nearly finished. You can get it at the half past four. Maka, Zutuba Day, Husa Sumo Brother Hitaka, Nanda De 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 so the evening comes. <sighs> so here comes Timothy and Titus. Hey, Titus, did you get that woman here? No, I struggle, but let's get it. get but close to that you think I'm joking Catherine Kuhlman had meetings in this one hall of this hotel one of the books of Jamie Buckingham And she was late. So her two bodyguards just helped her through the kitchen. Because it was closer through the kitchen to the hall than going around the foyer way. And they were just busy getting the dishes ready to go put on the tables for the evening dinner. And so the two bodyguards just walked with her. And as she walked through the kitchen she was praying in tongues and they said it was like a world war broke out like those dishes were just falling on the ground all those waiters all those people getting the dish were just out under the power Catherine Kuhlman wasn't there to minister to them she was going to the hall to minister to the sick outside she was a very well hardy house, so the more good and a man gling 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 would do some anger data. So 
So the one guy that didn't fall out, watch this whole procession. And a man he ministered in Durban up two months ago, he's a bit older now, Jerry B. Walker, it was 1967. Jerry B. Walker was in the meeting. And he said, my Lord, how did that happen? And he spoke to her. She said, brother, did you ever hear me say, don't grieve the Holy Spirit? Did you ever hear me say, all I've got is the Holy Spirit? She said, but there's things that I don't tell everybody. How much I speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. So he said, well, I'm going to try that. So his next crusade, he was in this elevator, going down from his room to the bottom to get into his car to go to his crusade. So, plus he 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 and they were going to go up, so they went to the elevator. But there's the lady sitting watching the whole procession. She knows Jerry B. Walker. She thinks, he's funny, he wasn't like that two weeks ago. Why is he speaking in tongues like that? So she watched these people getting into the elevator. Is the telephone later on? Uh uh, see, it was a cell phone. So the people got into the elevator and this lady sat there but the light doesn't go to one, two, three, four, five. So after two, three minutes, you know what happens? The elevator opens again. Here's all the people. <laughs> you don't have to believe it, but in 1982, I was fasting on sackcloth and ashes for 14 days on the Soutpans Berger outside Louis Trichot. I had a sack, threw it full of ash, threw myself full of ash. My vrouw denk ek word nou heel te mal, mal, sê sê my man, jy het mal. Wat gaan die mense vir jy sê, ek het nie een saak wat die mense sê nie. And somebody gave me the set of tapes by Jerry B. Walker on the anointing. And I said, my God, then I want it. Then I want it. And then I started speaking in tongues, ask it till today. I don't stop. I just turn the volume down at times. So when I get into certain places, I just turn the volume down. So when I read Bible, I praise the Lord, 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 the Ik hoop dat ik het pauze zo onder van een gaat. Ik heb niet geweerd jouw Bijbel wat alleen niet maakt. Ik heb hem opgeteld om te beginnen lezen. Die hele regie is vol op me. Maar het is de same Bijbel, zo de andere Bijbels. Maar is pap net gespeeld. Ribi, Sumba, Gamble, Ginga, Nimbang, Belangaya. But can you believe what power there is in speech? There's power in a look, man. Peter says, look at us. There's power in a gesture, Joshua says. But what about our speech? Of every idle word that comes out of your mouth, you shall give account. My vrouw zegt, ik vervelig te ouwe als ik Afrikaans wil afhoud. Ik heb niks om te praten. 
Maar we hier Hier ik niet. Ze zei, man, zij bek is vol tanden als zijn gezelschap komt. Zij zei, dus ik kom steeds zo bij haar vrouw. It's really the people that know me. I don't know what to talk about. Ik kan hem zijn hand aan worden, kan ik je vrouw. But I've got nothing to talk about. God, let it fall. Let it fall on us. Can I share this revelation and just look at one scripture? Maybe we'll take it off early this afternoon. Did you know when James wrote his letter to the church, to the brothers, and he said, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For he who is a hearer only is like a natural man, or like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. And then when he walks away, he forgot what he looked like. But the spiritual one, when he looks in the mirror, he's reflecting the glory, you may know? Yes, sir. So now we must look at the whole chapter 1 and chapter 2 of James. Go read that for homework. And you can get the context. He that is a sayer of the word deceives not himself. But he who does not say the word after he's heard it stays a natural man I'm just giving you to in short you can go look it up if you got the word you must say the word that makes you being a doer of the word if you're not prepared to speak the word of God with power you just say a natural man and the same with speaking in tongues there's power in tongues but I tell you I've seen it I said it to my children. I trained them that way. I said, "Mudlai, it's not easy. It's not easy to do it. 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 Okay? No offense, please. But I'm not even to make bail of making it. I'm trying to tell you what I said to my children. I said, "Mudlai, it's not easy to do it. It's not easy to do it. We'll end all the problems. But next time, she likes to be here. Now come make another." Vriend, ons bij plekken, dan krijg je ons om saam te bid, te pak de land daar in. Hij sê, sê, ek voel altijd om klap. Vroeg sê, oom, wie nie sê dat nie? Hè? Doe het nie lelijk, jy probeer vir jou iets sê. They speak the same way they spoke 30 years ago. But now it's become such a habit. Hele bali, hele la bali, hele la bali, hele la. Rabba, baba, rabba, baba. Hiri, bi, 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 bi. Ek moet my lijf vir jou hand kry, hy maak hulle goed nou. It becomes a habit. Klink het net so? Ek het goed geoefend, broer. Weet jy, kon ken ek het? Want die ene oom het altyd achter my gestaan toe ek jong gereed was, het elke sondag daar reimpie opgezet. En dan die pastoor aan het woord uitgeleef, want daar is hulle reimpie. Toe gaan ek na die pastoor, sê ek, het jy daar ding getraaid, sê ek, wat jy elke keer uitleef? Sê, o, jy vat nou aan godelike goed, sê ek nie, ek vat nie aan godelike goed nie, daar oompie sê die tjelle reimpie al seker verkeerd af, ja. Maar die kerk, ga maar aan! Katalama kayalama kapabalama haya En die tanni wat so opgestres is Sy kan nie by die oom by die huis kreeg en skreeg sy in die kerst Ribi chiribi ribi 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 Happy 
<laughs> but what about what about what about when you speak in tongues what about when you speak in tongues you put some effort into it every Monday we pray here in tongues everybody that comes to pray we come together and we pray in tongues and every Monday for six years I'm telling them when you pray put effort in don't kill him, Somebody's got to say it in public. Brother, the world will not be offended with tongues if there's power in us. I promise you before Almighty God, they will not be offended with tongues if there's power in us. They are offended by what I was offended of when I was born again and I came into a church and kill a makata no, these are kayas, no afkabriek. <laughs> mm. In tongues, every time I see that bold power to Mamra, Gas, Pangalego, So, Mam, Brugova, who comes in later? I could have said, Kele Mahaka, Tile Mohukubu. But what about when you pray in tongues? Mombra, Kenenge, Sombra, Gaila, Rukus, Mangaleviko, Rangalia, Iremenge, Zungro, Sambre, Gingla, Gangreneno. Hostanena, Mungo, 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 Na, Zegle, Ermini, Zandulu, Brukustra, Baba, Dice, Lede, Kiti, Siki, Baba, Harate. Don't walk on a road and you think it's the right road. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end of his destruction. But so many people are destroying themselves by thinking their traditions and their religions are right. But it's time to get the word in you. It's time to start speaking with power. If there's no result, will you not just look at your power? Will you not just look at your speaking? As if there is power, proclaim it boldly. But if there is no power, will you not look at your words? Yeah. For people come and speak, and speak, and speak, and speak. But where is the result of the Lord of hosts? Isn't it time to start checking up your own tongue? Did I not say you shall speak in diverse kinds of tongues? Did I not say there shall be a river flowing out of your innermost being? Did I not say, wherever this river will flow, there will be life? Mohobra sahakate, zengrenenge, zimblabanga, uskudunga, riki baba hakatu, sumbremani, sembramana, humbramano, sumbramana, limbregene. So it's time to get into a fresh flow of my Holy Ghost power. It's time to get in the flow of my Holy Ghost anointing. And then you will say, oh goodness, isn't this great? Oh goodness, isn't this nice? Oh goodness, isn't this awful? Oh goodness, isn't this powerful? Yes, it will be great because I will be in it. But open your mouth and I will fill it like I've said before of old. And I can go on for hours. If you put a tape recorder in front of you, are you just speaking the same old tongue for the past 20 years? Or do you get a diverse kind? Do you speak in diverse manners? Do you speak in tongues? The way we speak in tongues, I realize when it's prophetic, but it's never the same tongue. I realize when it's intercessory prayer, but it's never the same tongue. I realize when it's just uplifting and upbuilding. I realize when it's worship. There's a certain thing that you get to know through the year.
The Bible says, this is the finish of this message. In James chapter 3, if you never say the wrong thing, you will be a perfect, mature man. We spoke on maturity and perfection yesterday. So your tongue has got a lot to do with qualifying you into maturity. If you never say the wrong thing, you are perfect and mature. Then he goes on. Say the tongue is a fire. A flame of iniquity. Set on fire from hell. With the same tongue we bless God, but with the same tongue we curse man that's made in the image of God. This ought not to be so, my dear brothers. A fountain cannot bring forth bitter and sweet water. So God says, Man, for here the flames of hell got a hold of the tongues of people. Let them flames from heaven. And divide those tongues and put it on each other's heads. And let's get, let get their tongues. And if they can speak more in tongues, there will be less hellfire in them. Kom, je kan niet bij aan hoofd, de vrouw gaan leren aan haar nek, lekker te willen en te alle praten. Ik wil het kras zelf, kom aan, people. People fall into temptation because they don't walk in the spirit. Wat is het klopt, groot mensen, man, je babbeltje is niet meer. Why don't you mongrel, but name the singling in, mongrel, no, but don't make it. Ugly. Don't make it that you offend people all the time. Shut it down when you know it's not the right place to do it loud. But do it loud when you know it's time to do it loud. But speak in tongues more than all. And see how much anointing you just give. And you will practice your tongue to speak God's word. And when you got the time, Speak the word of the Lord. After you've prayed, you know, pray the word of God back to you. But with in between tongues, oh, I thank you, Jesus, that you are my shepherd. Mangle greste baranato su bruvenena. I shall not be in want of anything. Mangalugru sukama. I thank you that in this day they will come and supply to me. Just because you are my shepherd and I shall not want rubende. So I'm taking the word. Mix it with tongues, both is filled with power, but I'm putting effort into it. I'm forcing my mind not to think on other things. Then I get so lost in the spirit. My goodness, my throat is off, everybody else is off here. Why was you? Come on. Then evening comes. Then we sing. Halfway through the worship, I get up and say, Okay, it's all right. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout, yeah. Right. You can sit down. Everybody with pain just come out quickly, all the pain. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Where's your pain? Go on. Hallelujah. Where's your pain? Go on. Where's your pain? Go on. Oh. Is anybody still with pain? No, all are healed. How come they healed? I didn't pray for them. I didn't touch one of them. I didn't lay hands on one of them. What happened? I was busy speaking Holy Ghost words all day. So there's an atmosphere around me that's permeated, saturated with the Spirit of Almighty God. So I'm walking in this river of glory. So I come and I say, Thank you, Lord. You're going to heal them all today. You're going to heal them all today. You're going to heal them. I take authority over every sickness, disease. Now I'm walking past the line. Every sickness will go. Every And all of a sudden, I feel, lay hands on them. Touch, 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 touch. Just pick them up and see if they heal. Where's your pain gone? 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 
what I'm doing now is what we're here for. So God taught me a few things, and we're going to get deeper in a thing tomorrow for the three last meeting. But we can learn from each other. And tomorrow with the anointing, we're going to learn a lot. But I always thought, God, is this right what I'm doing here? Is this right? Then the only name I can call now is the man that I learned from the last two years, and that's Prophet T.P. Josh. That's all where I see the great America. So I can't talk about anybody else because I didn't see the great America. So I prefer to talk about him because I saw the great America. So he talks about the power of speech. This is where I got the message. Not this message. He wrote one sentence. I told you, Eddie was sitting next to me. My wife was sitting the other side next to me. And he said, Holy Ghost, speak equal power. I said, that's it. That's it. When the Holy Ghost speaks, there's power. That night I lied in my room and I just wrote everything down. There must be power. This is this message I wrote down that night. Wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down. So there must be something in this thing. But he doesn't speak. So where's the power? So God says, what do you think he does before and What does he do before praise for the sick? So I shared it with you this morning when he gave me the whole healing service last year April. Took my hand, ran with to the first one, took my wife's hand, ran to his office, sat on his TV and said to my wife, now let's just let's see how he's going to do it. Then he asked the question, do you think he, he'll be able to do it? Do you think he maintain it? She said, oh, I think he will. Oh, look at that one. I wonder what he's going to do with this one. He made comments on all of them. She was sitting with him in the office. And I'm here. Mm -hmm. oh, mm. Not funny. But now I'm sharing how I perceive it. You could have got it different. When I got in front of that healing line, and I looked at that first person, it took me two, three minutes before I started reaching out, stretching out, praying for him. Because I was caught away in the spirit in a dimension that I cannot explain to anybody in this place. I'll try and explain. I looked and I realized, but this man standing here is under total control of the man sitting in that office. He already took authority over every sickness and every spirit in that house. And I looked at him, and you can go check the videos out if you want to. And you can go there and watch them yourself. I looked at this, I said, I don't see anybody in this house. I'm trying to sell it in the spirit. If you're not in the spirit now, you will not understand. On a... So I just looked at that man, he had this little bandage around his knee, and said there, Leg injury, sport injury, failure of career. So I put my hand down. And I saw my face a movement there. So I pulled it there, he came. And I said, lift up that leg and there he was here. So I went to the next one, it was a man and a woman. A lot of problems. I looked at but they're not there, man. So I felt so weird. I said, God, how am I going to reach these people? I, I used to say, just look at me. But I can't say to them, look at me. They're not there. But they are there. But they're not there. But they're going with my hands. And God says, that man has trusted you with something that he's taken authority over to see if you will walk in that same authority. And if you will touch, I'm sharing with you deep things that I want to will, And if you can see what he is now seeing, you will have the same power. So I realized, he's already done the work. I just got to flow in that anointing. But then I realized, I've been doing it for years in a lesser fashion, but I did not even know I was doing it. In all our healing lives, I don't pray for the sick. I walk up and down. 
up and down. You that know us know. If I've ministered at your place, you would have seen it. What do I do? I take authority. In Jesus' name, I take authority over every person in this line. I take authority over the sicknesses, the diseases, the pains, the ailments. I bind every wicked spirit of darkness. I say every pain will go today. I don't do it so loud all the time. Sometimes I do it soft that nobody hears me. Sometimes I do it loud that everybody... And all of a sudden I realize it's there. And I stop at the person that I think. Where's your pain? Go on. Where's your pain? Go on. Give me your hand. What's wrong with you? Struggling with a thought? Just give me your hand. Touch them. And then all of a sudden I realize it's now all over. Then I say, bless, 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 bless. You got to hear in the lines because this is what we're here for. How to work miracles. That night, 11 o'clock, sitting in a bedroom with him, me and my wife, I asked him this question. Do you take authority over those people before you pray over them? Because when I prayed to them, it seemed like they were in another world. Do you want to know his answer? Where's the camera? I'll give you the answer. Sit down. This is the answer. <laughs> I walked out and said, thank you. Thank you. But if there's no power in your speech, how will you do it? How will you do it? So, I get the Holy Spirit to get power to my speech. Do you remember the message? It's power because of speech. His word is in power. So today, Holy Spirit, we ask that you touch our mouths and our tongues like the prophetic word says right at the outset of this meeting. God, we sick and tired of idle words, words coming forth from our mouth that does not produce power. God, if we want to speak to a lame man, we want to see him walking. If we speak to a blind person, we want to see their eyes open. If we speak to a cancer, we want to see it drying up. But God, we don't want this fountain to bring bitter and sweet water at the same time. So we ask that the water flowing from our bellies will be sweet, will be a Holy Ghost, will be anointed from on high. I pray in this audience sitting here today that we will all get a fresh infilling, that everybody will get a new thing today in this house to prove to us, I don't know the thing I'm speaking in now. God, if I can stand here and never speak the same tongue twice, week after week after week, and never prophesy in the same tongue twice, then all of us can get a new tongue today. And I'm serious. I'm not kidding. I never speak in the same tongue. The upper mouth is always different. Always. How do you know? I tape myself. I listen to the prophecies. So it's katama katala mahakataya. Not there. Now then, we have to have conferences with you. Now then, we have to have a lot of talk, a lot of talk, a lot of talk. You can judge them what the years are saying for. Elf. It was a bit too early for me to learn. As I go to conferences, I don't know what's going on. What is full is what is PPK and what is AG. Dat is een zekere stijl in talen. Ik denk aan wat een van die groot geest het hier gebeurt. Ja, dat is toch niet snap? Niet funny. Maar als God wil touch our mouth today, met een brand new tongue, en give us a fresh boldness, to not be scared to speak the word of the Lord, 
God will honor your word. Wil jy as hy moet krag is, gaan God om waarachtig eer. Ek wil stop, maar kan nog nie stop nie. I remember in Wenderland, we had a tent up in Wenderland, in one service I baptized 600 people. It was such a move of God in 1982. Such a mighty move of God. And we were invited to the Dutch Reformed Church in Levubu. And they had a type of outreach thing there. And they said, well, I pray for the city. So here's the Dumi and the Dumi's wife next to me. And there stands the blind man. And I know that she's now saying, let's see what you do now. And I picked up that spirit. And I said, thank you, Lord. If these blind eyes don't open, I know you're not God. Jij moet van God worden. Die vrouw is er geen skeert. Dank je. Ik wil dankbaar voor zeven dagen. Het jou goed gezet aan nagepennig? Hmm. Do you know that Elijah said, Hear the sound of abundance of rain. Did you know that Elijah said, Through the Spirit of God, If I see Ahab, there will be rain. Did you know after that, He had to go pray seven times for the rain? Look at this, it's not the fool, I don't know if you can get it. He He already did what God told him to do. He did go call Ahab. He did go on the mountain. He did get the fire down. I think if he just waited, he would have got the rain as well. No. But God so blessed him. And God so honored the fact that he was a man of prayer. That through that prayer, God still speaks today. Elijah was a man like us. And he prayed that it should not rain. And it rained not on the face of the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again and it rained. So God said, pray. But in between, speak the words that I tell you to speak. And don't panic after you've spoken it. Be sure you are anointed. So Holy Spirit, touch our tongues, touch our mouths, touch our mouths, touch our mouths. For the Lord would say, don't be just complacent to say, oh Lord, send the rain. Oh God, just do something great. God says, man, those type of prayers, I'll just throw it out of the way. I don't want you to just be complacent and just be a happy-go-lucky. I want you to put some effort into what you're doing. Drush, man, prachtso, zirla, ma fisa, ma kal, brika, mrachtso, brisi, prachtsolu. Put some action into it. Get the authority that I've put behind you. Say, get out of the way and speak my word boldly and see if I will not honor my word. The joy of the Lord will break out in your life. You will be so happy. You will rejoice and see my power. You will see my glory filling the house. Trump, 
Suure raste am prakja do laste flasta surge ma flaigina mruistela hlastibi you will see things that you've never seen before. In the audience, they will be slain in the spirit. You will not even have to speak a word. I tell you, amazing things will happen in front of you. You will see them fly through the air because of my power. Get in unity. Join with one another and say, God, let the glory come. Let your power fall. I want to see this in the power. Yeah, yeah. I want to do it right here, right now. Don't wait for another day. Don't wait for another hour. Get into it now. Come on, 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 come on. Get into it. Get, come on. Manga, zamba, ganda, lamba, kamba, lamba. Get into it. Get into it. Get into it. Oh, Rama Manga, Lemba Ganga, Oh, Ramo, Sama, Sekadeda, Sekadoba, Woo! Leba la Baga le Gonga. Hallelujah. I want you to press through now. There's no time to stop now. God has spoken so powerfully. I want you to press in, join with somebody's hand and say in Jesus' name, let the power come. Join with somebody. Let the glory come. Let the power fall. Barbadeira, Saprabombre, Ricadango, Socapanga. Oh, it's time, church. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for a fresh anointing to come into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time for fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Roca Bangla Gingla Gango. Press through. Press through. Press through. Press through. Press through. Press through, press through, brother. Press through. Bella Bangra Deida, Sombra Mangre, Oh Ramanga, Rengenge, Rengango, Rangambe, Oh Ramama, Segla Gegla, Segla Gobra, Riba Zaka Day, Yaska Bango Luba, Oh Rama. Come on, it's time. It's time. Serebe, Sereminga. In Jesus' name. Kelebongro Maha. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it, go for it, brother. Go for it. The bagay, sembling English. Oh, Ramanga, Rambangaya. Go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it. Rambanga, Langa, Sanga, Banga, Ringe, Ringe, Ringe. Rambanga, Langaya. Upa, pa, pa, In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So, Briska says, Camango, Sempre, 
Church, go for it. Get that full anointing. for somebody to lay hands on you press in Press through, press through, press through. More of your glory, more of your spirit, more of your power, eternal God. Touch your people, Lord, touch your people, Lord, touch your people, Lord. Anoint them, O oh God. Give them tongues of fire. Give them tongues of fire. Black Ravas Kumanges Kiliga Bagado. Fresh oil, fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fast really, fast, bless him, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, oh fresh oil, fresh oil, bunga, 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 dango, Jesus, 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 fresh, fresh oil. Seca bo, seca menge. Fars wali, fars wali, fars wali, fars wali. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. In Jesus' name. Solama, rembango, mango, manga, dego. Pressing, pressing. There's so much I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it come up in the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Touch your church. Touch your church, Jesus. Touch your church, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Happy. Sembenge lingo mbranga ningo. Ringa mangle ningo nombre. Ringambo. Ringangre. 
Banga den gongo pongo. Hop, hop. Så sakta. Show right. Venga lingra nungre. Venga nengo. Breve devo. Brevo. Se breveste. Breve despia. Tago robo. Ara man man man. Press in, press in, press in. We want it all, oh God. We want it all, Jesus. Le breve go basket. Di gasculo mungo. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. You don't have to fall if I pour water on you. It's just a sign. It's just a sign. It's just a sign. It's just a sign that's falling. This is just another sign. It's just a sign in the name of the Lord Jesus. You don't have to fall now. It's just a sign. It's just a sign. The joy of the Lord's going to enter the house. The joy of the Lord's going to enter the house. We're going to be dancing. There's going to be shouting. There's going to be praising. The glory of the Lord is entering the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit me this city on all for Jesus. No more after bell for us. You just go on. You just be busy with God. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God is in absolute control. You're welcome. You're welcome to minister to one another. You're welcome to just be on your own. You're welcome just to meet with God. Don't force yourself on somebody. But if somebody's close to you and say, can we pray together? You can. Otherwise, just be busy with God. Oh, oh. 